Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to generate seismic loads in RAM frame according to the IBC equivalent lateral force procedure. In RAM frame, this will be a two step process. Your first step is to review the masses that were generated by the program and make any modifications as needed. And your second step would be to go ahead and generate those static seismic loads. So let's go ahead and get started. In the main menu, select the loads option and then select masses. Now in RAM structural system, you can use the masses that were calculated by the program as a result of the mass dead loads that you created in the RAM modeler and the criteria you specified in the RAM manager. If you'd prefer, you can also use calculated values. In addition to that, you're going to notice that we can go ahead and apply an eccentricity to your seismic loads. What this will do is generate some additional seismic load cases considering both positive and negative eccentricity. Now, if you would like to specify an eccentricity, you can go ahead and enter that percentage here. The default considered by the program would be 5%. And if for whatever reason you need to change that, you can enter a new value here and then click recalculate. And finally, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the diaphragms at each level. Now seismic loads will be applied to each diaphragm in the model. If you do have any mass that's located outside the edge of a diaphragm, you have the option here to go ahead and assign it to a particular diaphragm. You can see here, I do have some mass outside of the basement diaphragm, and I'm gonna go ahead and send that mass up to the floor above. If you have no diaphragm and you chose not to combine it to any other level, that mass will be lost during the analysis. At this point, let's go ahead and click OK. Now our second step in our workflow is to generate our static seismic load cases. To do that, Go to the main menu, select loads, followed by load cases. For this video, we are gonna be focusing on generating seismic load cases. So we're gonna select the seismic radio button and we will create our label. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the appropriate standard. For this particular video, we are focused on the ASCE 716 equivalent lateral force procedure. We'll go ahead and select that option and click on the add button. Here you can see we have provisions for member forces or drift. For this particular example, I'm generating seismic forces for the consideration of the design of the steel elements. So I'll set that to member forces. Next, the program's gonna ask me, which directions I wanna generate my seismic loads, and I'll go in the X and Y directions, and I will be considering positive and negative effects of eccentricity using the value that was indicated in the masses dialog. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and enter all of the appropriate code parameters for the building that I have, depending upon its location and its lateral force resisting system. This will include your response modification factor, your seismic design category, your SDS information, and your structural period information. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of the options available at the bottom of this dialog. So in RAM frame, you have the option to consider orthogonal effects when you are generating static seismic loads according to the ASCE 7 equivalent lateral force procedure. When you consider seismic load effects, what the program will do is it will generate some additional load cases for seismic, considering the effects of 100% of your seismic load being applied to the structure in one direction, along with 30% of the seismic load being applied in the other direction, and these loads will be applied simultaneously. 
Now you will want to coordinate with your local building standard to see if orthogonal effects will be required for your particular structure. For our structure, we're going to go ahead and assume that orthogonal effects are not required, so I'm going to leave this checkbox unselected. The last checkbox we're going to take a look at is whether or not we're going to generate additional load cases for analysis with tension-only members. This particular model does not contain any tension-only members, so we'll go ahead and leave that option unselected. Once we're done, let's go ahead and click OK, and we'll see our seismic load cases have been generated. For this particular model, we considered seismic load in the X and Y directions with the effects of both positive and negative eccentricity. Again, had I considered orthogonal effects, I would get additional load cases being generated here. At this point, let's go ahead and click OK, and we are finished generating our seismic loads. Now, if you would like more information on the calculations that were performed for your seismic load cases, particularly the magnitudes and application location of your loads, you can review that information after an analysis occurs. To review your calculations for your static seismic loads, you can go up to the main menu, select reports, followed by your loads and applied forces option. Within your loads and applied forces, you can go ahead and advance to the point in your report where the seismic loads are being reported. Here I can see my seismic loads have been reported. The program will go ahead and give me some information regarding the inputs that I entered, including some calculated values. In addition to that, it's going to let you know what your applied diaphragm forces are in each direction and where that force will be located. Again, this depends upon the eccentricity that you entered in your seismic masses. Now this information will be available for each of the seismic load cases you generated in RAM frame. Now at this point, we'll go ahead and close out of that report, save our model, and this concludes our process for generating static seismic loads according to the IBC or ASCE 7 equivalent lateral force procedure. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.